if we we take all that history in in account uh, and and we ask ourselves what is from here the way forward uh, there's two questions first of all the general question what is a, a way forward out of the of the violence and the chaos and the second question is does Europe have a role to play and what would that be like well Europe's role in the Middle East since the secret sachs pico agreement which effectively divided up the Middle East peoples under our rule without asking them and then our constant support for Israel which is continues to thieve Arab land uh, for Jews and Jews only in occupied territory against international law. Um, I don't see any reason why there is or should be a role for Europe um, or for America for the same reasons. Um, look, I think there are two things which we lack today in trying to not solve, you can't solve crises. No, no, there aren't solutions. In, in the real world of politics and war, there aren't solutions. But there are resolutions. And we need to change our the way we look at the Middle East. The people there have never asked for democracy. For them, democracy is synonymous with the countries in the West which supported the dictators, which tortured them and imprisoned them and oppressed them. They don't want that, thank you very much. If you actually look what they said, if you look at the placards that I saw in the streets of Cairo, in Tahrir Square, they didn't ask for democracy, nor did they ask for Al-Qaeda or bin Laden. There wasn't a picture of bin Laden. They asked for dignity and they asked for justice. Justice, 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 justice for Palestinians, for Kurds, for Syrians, um, for Israelis, who've also been lied to by us. Remember, we suggested they might have a homeland in all of Palestine, not just that part of Palestine, which was created internationally and legally as Israel. Justice for the Gulf, who have no freedoms at all. And we, don't, we, we need to reassert our values, the word that our politicians like to use, in terms of the Arabs, not in terms of ourselves. These people want dignity and they want justice. They want the end to continuing military injustices and oppression against them. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we don't have any institutions. We live in the world of instant communication, of abuse on the internet, six o'clock press conferences, primetime TV. Um, we don't plan anything anymore. I look back, for example, historically, before I was born, not that long before I was born, to the San Francisco Conference of 1945, which set up the United Nations. Now, the politicians or statesmen involved in making that up, they were not doing something for primetime TV because they knew that the fruition of what they struggled for would only come to pass after they were dead of old age. They'd be in their graves. They were locked into something that would have an effect on the generation after next. Now, whether you like the UN or not, it's better than the League of Nations, and the League of Nations is better than the Battle of the Somme or the First World War, pre-League of Nations. And we are not creating these institutions. Look at the refugee crisis. What should we do? We put up borders, we scrap the Schengen plan, we put up more borders, we have states of emergency, we have red level, level four emergency in Belgium. For heaven's sakes, after the First World War, there were millions of Middle East refugees. What happened? The great Norwegian Arctic explorer, Fredhof Nansen, was set up by the League of Nations to be the refugee coordinator in the Middle East for the Great War and in Russia. And he, within a year, he had a system of Nansen passports, they were called, refugee passports which were accepted by 50 countries. So a refugee who was fleeing from Aleppo, as many Armenians did, literally from Aleppo, in 1918, 1919, could go to 50 countries and they say, ah, oh, Armenian refugee, there's your passport stamp, sir, thank you issued by the League of Nations, it was the Nansen passport. We have not even thought of doing that. After the greatest bloodbath of the 20th century up to then, the First World War, within one, two years, we had initiatives, forget the Treaty of Versailles for a moment, we had initiatives to help millions of people. Now we have nothing. In the Second World War, in 1941, before the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union in June of 41, when the British still expected Nazi invasion, when you were already occupied, Winston Churchill set up a government committee to organize the occupi occupation of Germany and how civil affairs would be run in occupied German cities at a time when we expected the Germans to occupy us. The following year, Cambridge University 
set up degree courses in how to run Germany after its conquest by the Allies. In 1942, that was before El Alamein. Now here, I'm, I'm, I'm not a great fan of Churchill for various reasons, but here was a man who looked forward, not to the six o'clock news or to the next Blair press conference, but he looked forward years to what we would do when we achieved the impossible and won against Nazism. We don't do that anymore. When the first American tanks crossed the Tigris River, nobody had an idea what to do tomorrow. But if, if you want to look forward uh, and, and have a, a more grand plan for f and, and, and look at the plans from the Middle East, can you plan something with ISIS in place? Is, isn't there an, 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 an imperative to get rid of, of... There was an imperative to get rid of Saddam. There was an imperative to get rid of the Nusra Front, who are now supposedly our moderates. There is a, an imperative to get rid of ISIS. There was an imperative to get rid of the PLO, to get rid of Arafat, to get rid of Abu Nidal, to get rid of Ayatollah Khomeini. I've reported all these. All these were imperatives. Yes, we'll talk about justice afterwards, but we've got to get rid of this. And after ISIS, there'll be another monster arrive. I suspect, being a cynic, that we're already trying to find the moderates in ISIS. We're going to split it up if we can, pay some. I suspect that's going on now. That's what's actually happening. Not what should be happening. How do we bring justice to the peoples of the Middle East? At which point ISIS is totally irrelevant. It fades into the desert. It's dust. But we won't do that. We want to fight ISIS. We want to meet them on their demands and terms. And we're going to do that.